Yeah, hello again. This is a follow-up video from my 100,000 people to die at the Olympics. You know, for all the people out there that were saying, you know, it's just conspiracy, it was just satire made up by a magazine, or, you know, just look at what's going on now. <laughs> you know, uh, are all the politicians in Britain doing all the, what they're doing now, all the drills and everything else, and I'll show you videos. To, you know, prepare for a terrorist attack. Are they doing it because it was just a joke done by a magazine? Or is there evidence out there? I mean, just the fact that me and others like me have posted that video and forwarded it and spread the news that we've seen the signs and we know what's going to happen, we know what they're planning, may have actually averted uh, a bombing or some sort of terrorist false flag attack but it doesn't mean that it stopped their end game because they're using it they, they're using the fear just as, as much as if it had happened if if nothing we've we've actually speeded things up for them because they would have had to have waited for the games done the attack and then use the fear afterwards. Now they're using the fear straight away. So in a, in a roundabout way, <laughs> we've helped them, which is a bad thing. But, you know, I'm going to show you videos. They've, they've been training the army, training the police, fire brigades. They've all been doing drills and things, you know, high public, high profile, drills so everybody can see it all, it's on the media. I don't know whether it's just been shown in Britain. I've spoke to people in America that don't have any clue what's going on. They say they don't know nothing about it. I suppose if you were looking for it you could find it but you know it's probably not public domain stuff. Well should I say it's not it's not on every you know normal TV network. But yeah, they, they've been preparing, I mean, I've seen the fear being spread, linking it to 7-7, linking it to the London riots. In people's minds, they're, they're you know, playing on it. Oh, it's just like 7-7, seven seven, it's going to happen again. It's just like the London riots, that's going to happen again. We've got to do something about it now. Um, you're going to lose freedoms. Pure and simple, they're going to use that fear against you again. So, just be warned. And for all the naysayers out there who commented on the original video saying it's a load of rubbish and everything else, uh, <laughs> it's there. You know, the reports are there. They're spending thousands, they're deploying, you know, more troops than there are in Afghanistan just to protect the London games. It's got air to air to ground missiles there, you know. <laughs> what more can I say? Watch the videos, I'll catch you next time. In the air and on the water, a Royal Navy helicopter stops a London river bus. This is just one scenario for a potential terrorist threat. There's been a lot of theory so far, but this is the first glimpse of what Olympic security could look like in practice. The Met, along with the Royal Marines, are preparing for the Olympic Games. Now just 190 days away. They're trying to understand each other, their different roles and responsibilities. Essentially when the police need to pull back and the military takes over. Well, you saw a range of the tactics that we got from a, a just a, 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 a asking a boat to stop, which hadn't stopped, uh, through to use of entanglement mechanisms to stop the engines on boats operating, all the way up to an armed boarding, uh, either by police officers or by the military. The Royal Marines have the specialist skills and, of course, more firepower. The Royal Marines are here to support the Met Police. Uh, the Met will police the Games, uh, and we're, we're only here to help them uh, in the worst-case scenario if they request it. Last summer's riots were a huge challenge for the Met.
public order around the Olympics this July may test them again. But it's security at key venues where they'll need to be ready. And the total cost inside the park and outside is already estimated at more than a billion pounds. I think you will see uh, the security budget to keep incrementally increasing. We've seen that already just before Christmas. Um, you saw a doubling of the amount of money that was being put into venue security. Um, and, and, and we'll keep seeing these figures uh, keep moving upwards. For the authorities, though, the risk of breaking the budget is certainly not as big as the risk of getting the security wrong. Uh, since the Atlanta Games, there's been an internationally accepted minimal level of protection for the Olympics. Will my right honourable friend uh, tell the House and confirm to us that there will be a full range of multi-layered defence and deterrence for the London Games, including ground-to-air based missiles in London? Um, I can assure my right honourable friend of thank him, uh, first of all, for his uh, generous words. Um, I can assure him uh, that uh, all necessary measures to ensure the security and safety of the London Olympic Games uh, will be taken, including, uh, if the advice of the military is that it is required, including appropriate ground-to-air defences. The Americans are very heavy-handed about security. Uh, they don't like to do it in the, in the British way of doing things. The British like to keep things very quiet, remain very, very covert. The Americans like to be very upfront and visible. There's a difference in style there. At the same time, of course, Britain is a significant terrorist target. There are ongoing plots all the time. Uh, conducted against British targets, usually disrupted by MI5 five and 6 and the counter-terrorist police. Uh, but, you know, we did have 7-7. Seven, seven. We do have a substantial number of uh, known terrorist-type activists, up to 3,000 extant in the country. And so from the American perspective, you can't be too careful. At the same time, there's also an issue over the numbers of people that are going to get deployed uh, during the Olympics. There's a controversy uh, according to The Guardian, between the uh, G4S uh, had budgeted for 10,000. It now appears that they need about 21,000. The army's being asked to step in with up mm. to 5,000 troops. So they are going to need to have a very substantial security presence. Today brought a startling announcement about the London Olympics. There was always going to be a military contingent involved in security at the Games, but today, unexpectedly, the government announced the number of soldiers at the Games would almost triple. In fact, there'll be more soldiers in East London in July than there are in Afghanistan right now. I'm joined by Richard Watson. Exactly what was announced today? Well, I mean, the detail is fascinating, Kirsty. The original plan was for a security force of about 10,000 for the entire Olympics. I think we can see the figures coming up here. That was recently dramatically increased to 23,700 after a detailed review. Now, the Ministry of Defence confirmed today that 13,500 members of the armed forces, military personnel there, will now be deployed to the Olympics, a staggering number in a way. Up to 7,500 of these people will be used for venue security. 5,000 will support the police. There will be 1,000 strong, uh, 1, strong unarmed contingency force for use in the event of an Olympics-related emergency, which is clearly a reference to a terrorist attack. Well, how far does terrorism, or the possibility of terrorism, factor in these plans? Well, I think it's, it's clearly central, Kirsty. I mean, uh, London clearly is a huge target for the Olympics next year. Everyone knows that. We've now learned today that there will be naval ships dis deployed, HMS Ocean, in the Thames. There will be uh, Typhoon jets on standby. We have surface-to-air missile capability. Um, I think it's uh, important to say, though, that the terrorist threat level hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of this planning was done on the terrorist threat level of severe. It is now substantial. So that's not directly behind this. But what we're going to see is armed forces have for a long time been part of the planning process. Mm -hmm. We're going to see specialists deployed, undercover sometimes, uh, for example, uh, surveillance experts, uh, sniper cover, all those kind of people. So how safe are these games going to be? How safe can the games be? Well, it's all about getting the balance right. As sources said to me today, uh, if you bring on more armed forces personnel, then it means you can f uh, hasten the throughput of people into the stadia, for example, mm -hmm. and, and avoid the allegation that the games is a failure because of huge queues. But I was chatting to a security source today who actually said that they are expecting a lot of intelligence chatter during the games from foreign overseas intelligence agencies who are going to be very sensitive about any allegations of plot, so they're going to be receiving information into the UK on that, plus chatter from the UK 
aspirational terrorists th talking about attacking the games, however unlikely that may be. And I think lastly, it's important to remember, terrorists may not choose, of course, to target the games because they are highly protected. Look at the 7-7 in 2005. All the security focus was on the G8 in Scotland and we saw the London bombings down south. Richard, thank you very much. Well, earlier I spoke to the Defence Secretary, Philip Hammond, and asked if the extra military provision was due to an increased security threat. No, the planning threat level remains exactly the same. As you know, because uh, the uh, Olympic authorities have made this clear, uh, there has been a requirement to increase the number of people used in venue guarding, up to about 23,000. Uh, and when we've looked at how best to recruit and deliver those numbers of people, uh, the question has arisen whether the military could provide uh, some support and the uh, army have concluded that they could deliver 7,500 people towards that 23,000 total without impacting on any of the other obligations and tasks that the military undertakes. Uh, the additional personnel are not being uh, deployed in a policing role, they're being deployed uh, as venue security personnel to help with the searching uh, and control of people coming into the stadiums and venues to make sure, uh, sort of airline style, that nothing that shouldn't be in there gets in. Well, let's be clear, will they have access to weapons if they need them? No, they won't. They will be unarmed. They'll be working alongside unarmed security guards and unarmed volunteers. Uh, the police, of course, uh, and if necessary, uh, military support to the police would be available if any threat uh, arose. But these people will be doing an unarmed role. So will have soldiers working to bosses in a private security firm? The overall uh, control of venue security will be managed by a private security uh, contractor uh, and there will be groups of soldiers working alongside uh, private security guards and volunteers. They will of course be managed directly uh, by military personnel but ultimately uh, the security at the venues will not be run by the military. The military will be providing manpower support. It will be the civilian contractor uh, and ultimately the police that are in control. So will we be able to tell the civilian staff from the army personnel? Uh, I think so because the army personnel will be wearing army uniforms so they'll be easily distinguishable. So no Olympic t-shirts then? Possibly Olympic t-shirts but they'll be wearing uh, uh, army combat trousers and army boots. I think you'll be able to spot the soldiers. Is the MOD picking up the tab for this extra staffing? The additional 7,500 uh, people who will be supplied as part of the venue guarding force uh, will be paid for from the Olympic budget. There will be no additional cost to the MOD. Will it be cheaper for the Olympic organisers? Not necessarily cheaper, uh, but we do believe uh, that it will be more resilient. We can uh, deliver 7,500 troops into the equation that makes the recruiting and training uh, challenge for the civilian contractor that much more manageable uh, and it makes the whole arrangements much more robust. Did David Cameron make this decision? Uh, it was a decision made uh, collectively by a committee of the cabinet that's been working on the Olympic arrangements. Was David Cameron in the room when the decision was made? Uh, yes, of course he was. So is this all about showing British spirit now? Um, it's a practical solution. We are absolutely determined to ensure that the 2012 Olympics goes off smoothly, is a very successful Games, and that people come here confident that they will be safe and secure. And we believe that the military support to the policing effort, uh, as well as the additional 7,500 military personnel that will be guarding the venues, will reassure the public and those military personnel will be very pleased to have the opportunity to take part in what will be a once-in-a-lifetime uh, uh, exercise in London. Philip Hammond, thank you. Thank you.